My name is Olivia Brower and I'm a mixed media painter from Hamilton, Ontario. I've always had a passion for creativity. My family, who are all artists in some capacity, supported that my whole life. So that really nurtured my curiosities with art, and it made me want to become an artist. I was born and raised in Mount Hope, which is in more of a countryside, a rural area, um, and I didn't get much exposure to the city and what it has to offer. Um, but um, I think this lifestyle of being in the country kind of helped nurture my interest in and appreciation for art and nature, um, and just it really helped me foster my creativity. So I moved to uh, Mississauga and enrolled in the Art and Art History joint program with the University of Toronto Mississauga and Sheridan College. And uh, while I was there, I was just really focusing and specializing on painting and printmaking. As I took my art career more seriously in undergrad, I like to approach a painting as a sculpture or collage by adding multiple mediums to collaborate with the painting. This will always be a fascination to me and something I can see myself experimenting with for a long time. I was also really interested with the materiality of paint as a liquid pigment and the various ways to apply it on a surface. My work is largely based on my experience with blindness. I've been partially blind when I, from a young age, due to a rare virus. Um, that affected both of my eyes actually, but uh, one was healed and the other one was just left scarred um, and I can barely see out of it, it's very blurry. But I've been adapting to seeing out of one eye uh, my whole life, um, so I'm lucky to have that at least. Um, and I want to be able to use that in my work um, to be able to have both experiences of vision and blindness. Um, and to, yeah, just communicate that with my audience. While I was an undergrad, I started experimenting with the idea of um, depth perception and seeing representation of an image that was um, abstracted. Uh, I called them ink blots as a reference to the Rorschach ink blot test, which was a psychological experiment to test what someone would see from a mirrored abstract image and what their perception would mean based on their personality, taste, behavior, etc. I love the idea and application of layering, so I would start each painting with a charcoal drawing and then layer different viscosities of paint on top. I also started sewing pieces of mylar and acetate onto paintings as a way of obscuring the image and hiding what was behind it. The work that I made also became an opportunity for me to talk about my blindness as a way to overcome my self-consciousness about it. After I graduated, I shifted my style and subject matter slightly to address blindness in a more metaphorical sense. We live in an age where feelings of fear and scarcity are amplified, and our view of life is obstructed and distorted by our anxieties. I wanted to create a series based on parables about spiritual and physical blindness, a reminder to myself as a follower of Jesus to see the world through the lens of faith and hope regardless of circumstances. Today, faith in anything other than our own rationality is often considered irrelevant or taboo, but I wanted to encourage the viewer to embrace introspection and see the world with faith and hope, rather than acting blindly out of fear. I wanted this series to address vision as a way of seeing and understanding, perceiving and believing what is right, and having faith in those things. After the previous series, I started to think about how a visually impaired person would experience a gallery setting, since they'd probably only be limited to sound art or uh, audio recording of the exhibition being described to them. 
Um, so I thought about making work that is accessible to both uh, people with sight and those who are visually impaired um, using senses other than sight um, to rely on um, and how those perceptions uh, would compare and contrast um, between someone with sight and someone who is visually impaired. I made a proposal to create work based on these ideas and I was granted a residency to the Cotton Factory through the Hamilton Arts Council from December 2020 to August 2021. The Cotton Factory is this beautiful, updated industrial building with so much character and it comes alive with the bustling community of artists working away in their studios. It's a hub for an array of artists and artistic businesses that really encourages motivation and creativity for my own practice. I have my own room to develop my work in, which makes me feel so free to create whatever I want in such a large space. I've used the space to make the ideas I've dreamed of making for a long time come to life and also snowball those ideas into new projects. One of the tenants offered to help me photograph my work professionally, so I found that the Cotton Factory community can have a big impact on my work. This is one of my uh, recent projects that I'm working on. Um, they're called contact kits. Um, they're just in these card cardboard boxes um, with the word contact on there, and they're translated in braille at the bottom. They're embossed so you can feel uh, what it says. And on the top here is a teardrop shape printed on top, which is part of the design inside. I'll explain later. And at the back of the box here is my name and website and contact information. And that's all embossed here as well. And then inside is a little booklet and a painting which comes with a little slip on top and on the slip are these teardrop shaped tabs which are all embossed in braille and they go inside the booklet uh, on this slip is a little hidden message in braille and the slip can be hung next to the painting when you're finished taking the tabs off, it has grommets on the back and the painting. All the paintings in the kits are um, raised uh, so you can feel, feel the texture. Um, they're all tactile. Um, they're not all the same. Um, I'm trying to make them into acrylics or just sewing materials on top of canvas. Um, this one's a wood panel. And on the side here is my name in braille. And the booklet also has contact embossed on the top here on a slip and it uh, has the braille translation underneath so that can come off easily. It also has the teardrop shape printed on top. And then inside it's an accordion style booklet. And most of the pages are designated areas for the teardrop shape to be put. Just put there. They're all embossed um, and the sleeves are removable if you don't want to use them. Underneath the designated area is a line where you can write the uh, English translation for the braille underneath. And at the back of the book um, are a bunch of lines here. It's just a reflection area of uh, what your thoughts are from the project, um, what you think of the art, how, what it reminded you of, um, that kind of thing. And at the front is a little pocket for a braille alphabet chart to learn braille. And about the project, uh, just an artist statement and how the project works, and a little bio about me. And along with the booklet comes with another small booklet, um, and it's just a braille translation of these pages.
papers here. Um, and they're all embossed sheets. And I just made this project um, just as a way to give a chance for people who are visually impaired uh, to experience art uh, in a fun way, but also make it accessible for people who can see um, and just make it a fun way to learn Braille. It's just, uh, just an experiment and I, uh, I hope to keep continuing making it. This is the touch board kit right here. Um, it comes in this little box here, starter kit by Bear Conductive. And uh, I'm gonna use this kit for a series of paintings that um, I've interviewed a couple people who have experienced visual impairment to some degree, whether colorblind, completely blind, um, or other forms of visual impairment. And I'm going to tr uh, translate our conversation into Braille and then paint that onto a canvas. I'm going to connect it with this touch board here. Uh, it's going to speak out the translation of the Braille through a speaker. And uh, I'll just show you how it works. So I've uploaded um, a couple sound clips just to this MP3 card inside the touch board here and I've connected um, the alligator clips to certain uh, points um, that's connected to the mp3 card here and uh, I have to connect it with metal uh, or this conductive paint here otherwise it won't work um, and I can use the alligator clips with metal or this paint and I'll make that sound And it comes through that speaker. Um, yeah, so this is just an experiment right now, um, but I'm hoping to make a couple paintings um, just of the conversation I've had with those people, um, just talking about their experience uh, with visual impairment and um, how they perceive the world with their impairments. Um, just bringing awareness of, of uh, what they're going through and um, including them in, in a conversation um, and just hoping to um, exhibit those paintings um, once it's safe to do so, uh, so people will be able to touch it and kind of interact with it. It took about a year to get these ideas refined into a final product and my hope is that it would bring awareness to the accessibility needs of those who are visually impaired uh, and that it would actually be an enjoyable experience for everyone to perceive art in a different way. It's unfortunate that this pandemic is causing limitations for the work to be viewed in person, but I'm taking advantage of this time to expand and experiment with the work in a number of possibilities. I love to be working and seeing my work take shape in the studio. Um, and it just brings me so much joy and fulfillment to be a part of this residency opportunity. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd like to give a shout out to the Hamilton Arts Council for not only organizing my residency, but also managing everything for the Hamilton Arts Week. One of their initiatives is the Save the Arts Fund which invites the community to help donate to support artists and arts organizations that are um, in financial need. If you're able to donate, please go to the Hamilton Arts Council website, go to the Save the Arts Fund link, and from there you'll be able to see a list of people who you can donate to directly. You can also uh, purchase memberships or merchandise directly from those people as well. If you're not able to donate financially, please use the Save the Arts Fund image and 
um, spread it out in social media if you can. Uh, if you yourself are in financial need, um, you can easily sign up there uh, on their website as well. Thank you so much again for watching this video um, and please enjoy the rest of the Hamilton Arts Week.